Hey everybody, welcome back to the journey. I apologize for not having a video last week, um, but Marilyn uh, left, uh, was here, and we were on a serious research think tank week, and we have got a lot accomplished, and so I'm really proud of that. Um, and then I lost my voice, and as you can tell, it's not completely back yet, but I'm going to attempt to make this video because we've been having storms in and out all day and so i found a little break where it was raining and not thundering and lightning so much so i thought i'd go on and try um we're going to talk about mtdna and why dna matches today all right and we're gonna we're gonna need you to get a worksheet printed out like this one i am working on a different one but um, it's got more generations here for you because a lot of our matches, you know, are happening, seem to be concentrated in the fourth, uh, third to fifth generation grandparents. And so this, this one is a little short for that. But you can, you can make two until we get a different one. Um, I hope that you're prepared for this one because basically uh, MTDNA and a Y-DNA match are going to be basically the same kind of um, situation where you would work through um, a pedigree for the other person or your match so that you could see where you match. Um, but specifically, we're going to talk about Y-DNA and the MTDNA. And um, I threw up in the announcement... I did include the graph which shows an empty DNA and a Y DNA line. Okay, so we've talked about this in the past, but I know that some people are still a little confused on that. So uh, a Y DNA is male DNA. Only males carry it. It's passed father to son like a surname. And this Y DNA is passed father to son unchanged for tens of thousands of years. And then we also have mtDNA, which is basically the same. It's passed mother to child, unchanged for tens of thousands of years. And so if you match somebody on a full sequence mtDNA, somewhere back there in your lineage, regardless if you recognize the surnames or not, please don't get hung up on I don't recognize surnames, because that has zero to do with your matches, okay, because somebody else could have married a different surname from your line and carried that different names on, but you're still a match. So we're going to start with an empty DNA. We worked this one, um, I worked this one in Maryland last week, and we broke down her empty DNA wall um, that she's been struggling to overcome for more than 10 years. And so that was really exciting, but you can do it too um, if you've had your mtDNA and your Y-DNA done. Um, let me get the board erased. Um, let me get the board cleaned off. Um, but um, we're going to talk about haplo assignment first. Um, and I know that some of you are also struggling with haplo assignment. And so, I'm going to try to explain that the best that I can. Um, let me get this thing up here. Okay, first we're going to tackle haplo assignment. And I will... Um, on an empty DNA. What I'm working with is I'm working with, Maryland has a certificate of empty DNA. Okay, so, and it gives her haplo assignment there. And um, so, if you haven't already done this, um, please try to um, get your empty DNA or your mother's DNA, empty DNA. And remember that your mother you're a female, your mother's mtDNA, well, if you're a male as well, 
uh, your female, your mtDNA will be exactly the same as your mother's. So unless you just want to verify maternity. Um, hey Josh, I'm sorry I can't answer right now. Um, so if, if you're... Um, if you're test, if you've tested your mtDNA, unless you just want to test maternity or for Y DNA paternal for father to son, there's really no sense in spending the money to test again. But you know, it's clearly up to you. And and a lot of people say, well, I want to verify. Well, there's really not the need. But anyway, you can. Um, it's up to, strictly up to you. Um, we're gonna start with the haplo assignment first. And I'm just going to show you this again. Uh, well, that doesn't show it because this is a later. Um, Marilyn's haplo assignment is there on her folder. Um, Maryland's haplo assignment that we're working with today is an H7 small a1 and a small a. Okay, so the first thing that I would do whenever I get my haplo assignment is I would trace out my furthest female mtDNA line in my pedigree. And then let's talk about what haplo assignment means. Okay, haplo assignment means that your farthest, most recent ancestor, either male or female, this is their origin. Okay, remember that DNA is only a study of human migration. It is nothing more it will not tell you what you are. It will not say I'm English or I'm Irish or I'm whatever. They can sell you these kits and tell you they're going to tell you where you were from. It's all a bunch of bunk in my eyes because I could take your alleles or your autosomal results and I could make you look any way you I you know, whatever test that I'm testing against. And so I caution you in, in really not taking a lot of heed in these autosomal admixtures because remember autosomals are a study of your entire genome which will report a list of alleles okay those alleles will be common among what group of people depending on what test that you take because allele humans are so closely related and um, there's really no distinguishing uh, factors about anybody's DNA to tell you Yo, you're Irish or you're English. All we say is, is that your alleles appear to be common when put against this test among Spaniards or Iberians or whomever. Um, but haplo assignment is about origin of your furthest, most recent foremother or forefather in a surname line and an mtDNA line. We're going to talk about mtDNA haplo first, which um, hers works out to be an H7A1A. Okay, so that we know that H is the mother Helena. Okay, we know H is Helena. Now, seven will represent a geographic region, and in this case, um, it most resembles um, the area of. Um, the Turks, um, Turkey, um, 
Albania, those kind of areas. So this would be a Turk or I, I'm just saying this loosely, okay? Um, because all of these numbers are geographic regions downstream. Okay, so Helena is found in Europe. Okay, she's European. She did migrate from Asia into Europe. And so you will find a lot, if you look at the mother haplo tree, you will find a lot of a, a lot of other haplo assignments come from Helena because she is a very, very early mother to Europe. Okay, so um, seven region is, is Turkey, Albania, you know, Spain, Portugal. It could be in those regions as well. France, like... Um, South France could be included in that area. And then A1A would be a downstream or into a, a, a group or a minority group. In Maryland's case, this haplo assignment is common among Turks. Albanians and Romanis. And here we go with that gypsy stuff again. And I know everybody gets tired of me um, talking about the gypsies. Y'all want to hear about the Native Americans and they are there. But these people are there as well. And so I can't neglect white, black, African, gypsy. Um, whatever the case may be, I'm going to discuss it. And the overwhelming, when I got this haplo last week for Maryland, when we broke down the S&Ps reported, I was a little bit stunned all over again. Um, I understand that everybody wants to be Native American, okay? And we do have Native American ancestors. There is Native American there. But the overwhelming, even more than white European, is Romani. This haplo actually is pretty exclusive. It's what they call an anomalous mtDNA or an anomalous haplogroup and it is most common among gypsies. Of these regions, okay, so that's that and I, I, I can't help what I, it's being reported. Um, I've had a little bit of a misunderstanding with some people lately who've been writing me about the gypsy, you know, ex, you know, saying that, you know, I'm uh, not reporting correctly, but I am being very honest. I would never make up anything. Um, I, it's just as shocking to me as it is to anyone else. And then in just a minute, this is a Goins line. This is a Goins line. And the male counterpart of this female mtDNA, the male counterpart to this and why this is so significant is because this is a Goins MT, and this is a Y DNA line. This, this Goins male line is exclusive to the Jeremiah William Moses well I shouldn't say William Moses 
because until we get some until we get some confirmation on some other DNA reports, I'm not going to say that. But Jeremiah and James Goins. He uh, Jeremiah was from Philip. Times Odie, and we think it's Monroe or Montreux. But this was his second wife. James married. James was married to Elizabeth Perkins. I know that, but. I was trying to see who her parents were. Um, both of these groups are enumerated in the Big Black Band of Choctaw and on the Big Black River and Lake in Mississippi Territory in 1831. So, in 1831, James Gibson James and Gibson. Now, James is a separate Y DNA line, so I hate to put him up there because his Y DNA was different. However, we all are all related. They were cousins, so but Gibson does not fall into this category. So I'm not going to include him there. Um, but Philip uh, was not enumerated there. Uh, but Kizzy Ash Nash, who was his third wife was enumerated in 1814 or 1815 in Mississippi Territory with Ben Ashes. And we believe that they were um, there to sign treaties and help with removals and some um, self-removals prior to forced removals in 1836. <coughs> However, James and Gibson's family who were enumerated in the Big Black Band. Um, and then we know Philip and uh, Eli Crowder, their they had a sister, Martha Patsy. Um, she married Eli Crowder and they were all um, in the force removals in 1836, but they were all enumerated on the Natchez Trace um, on the Big Black Band. And so these guys here, what I call Big Black Band. Uh, what I call, this is me interjecting, of MOA Choctaw. Okay, so this Y-DNA here, which is the counterpart to this female, you know, this James married Elizabeth Perkins, his Y DNA, but their Y DNA was an H with a star male, male Y DNA. This H with a star is exclusive. It, it is found in no other people, and we've been knowing this for nearly 20 years now, that this H haplo with the star is only found among gypsy males. It comes from India, just like and went through Iran, what is current day Iran, at that time it was Persia. Afghanistan, then they were in Egypt along the side of the Jews who came out of Egypt and this is why um, we have a lot of trouble distinguishing uh, gypsies and the Jews um, just because no two humans are so unlike that we can tell them apart um, and when they share a migration pattern then we're fairly uh, uh, twisted to try to find um, some way to distinguish the two. However, 
we know that the Roma Gypsies next went to eat, uh, to Rome, and that's why they're called Roma Gypsies. And all of these, the Moa Choctaw, also among the red bones, carry what's called the Calder DNA. And when I say by Calder, I mean as in Calder. which equals Cooper, which was their trade. But it is the Calder, um, the Coopers um, were exclusively royal gypsy um, lines, maternal lines from India. And so we can identify and we have identified tons of them. The Moa Choctaw are just full of them, even though there in Oklahoma, um, there are many, many Native Americans who carry this Calder mix. And the reason being is because this Europeans exiled all gypsies from Europe. And um, especially Spain, Portugal, Iberia, France, um, that were Catholic. Um, and they brought these people into Old Mobile Bay and Charleston, excuse me, but especially Old Mobile Bay, probably since the 11th century or prior. And so we know that these people, and in fact, they have their own tribal leader, uh, the Gypsies, who is also their tribal Choctaw leader. I mean, and, and they're recognized. They have their own burial locations in Oklahoma, and I have talked about that in the past. Um, but um, these MOA uh, are, are, I would venture to guess that 70 to 80 percent of them who's known as MOA Choctaw uh, also carry these Calder markers um, for the royal lines of the gypsy people from India and it just the intrigue just grows and grows every day so um, but when I got her haplo assignment her female haplo assignment back I was you know pretty shocked so um, I don't know why but I was um, I guess I'm wanting somebody to prove it to me every day kind of like the rest of you um, it's kind of astonishing you know um, information Okay, so that is haplo assignment. Haplo assignment is nothing but human migration. Human migration. DNA is nothing but human migration. I cannot stress to you guys enough that we need to stop looking at this as a like a an intensely personal thing. Um, my human migration is human migration and when as people migrated into an area they would pick up dna and they would leave dna behind and so we can follow trails through the world by human migration and, and human dna all right so i'm going to get this down but you can see that um a lot of the native americans and we're going to talk about and in fact i do need to bring up the fact that this mtDNA has an exact match with Spanish Peg Gibson female line, as well as living Cherokees in Tahlequah, Oklahoma. Okay, so there you are right there. This mtDNA is found among the Moa, it's found among the Cherokee, and it's found among the Melungeons. Okay, so we all go back to what is the most overwhelming DNA among us. And that's it. I, I, I can't change it and I can't. Um, I'm very proud of it. Whatever it is, I'm very proud of. Um, so, but this is a Goins male line and a Goins female line. So we're fixing to work. We're fixing to work this female. Okay, so Marilyn 
through Family Tree DNA Project, she was able to locate several in exact full sequence mtDNA matches. Okay, she was she was able to locate those, and you can too. I don't know how the other. I don't know how the other agencies report it, but um, on MTD or on Family Tree DNA, you can go over to your matches, your map, match, map, your matches map. I'm sorry, I apologize. I can't really talk, and I may have to cut this a little short because I can feel my voice is going again, and I've done everything I can think of. Um, so she found, she was actually very lucky, and I know this is going to sound backwards, but she was actually very lucky. She did not have very many MTDNA matches. She already knew about her match to Virginia at the Telequah Nation, a living Cherokee, and she knows about that line goes straight back to Spanish Peg through the coals and the musgroves and the wards and, you know, people like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, you know, we knew about those, but she had a match through Family Tree DNA to someone she knew, someone she grew up with and someone she knew she was related to, but however, um, was a little bit of a shock to her uh, mm, my thing is listening to me so um was typing everything I said out which might be handy so <laughs> okay so we're gonna work her match her match was a Clark and I'm just gonna leave Miss Clark um, private at this point, uh, just because I don't have her permission. Um, so I'm just going to leave any identifying remarks just private. And so until, you know, she, we have to find out that she wants to participate, but Marilyn gave me the green light and said, do whatever you like. So we are. All right. And by the way, she did have a match which I thought was extremely interesting. She had two MTDNA matches. One was to a weaver. And the other is to an Evans. Which weavers, like I said, I talked about the big black band in Choctaw having this Calder DNA. Um, they were Moa Choctaws. The Weavers were included in the Moas. So I thought that was interesting. We have not worked that into DNA yet, but we will. Okay, so what the first thing that we did when we got the match was I said, okay, we have to get her pedigree. Okay, you have to know your pedigree and you have to get your match's pedigree. By hook or crook, you got to get it so that you can figure out how where you come from and so um we worked miss clark's pedigree which we were very fortunate because she was able to um give us that information and marilyn already had it and, um so it all worked out very well sometimes they're a little harder than that but don't get discouraged what i want you to do is when you go to your matches, I want you to find the oldest known living ancestor and try to get that match because that one's going to go back the furthest. And so as long as their genealogy is good, you should be able to figure yourself back in there. So we're going to work on Aldous first. And I think I'm going to erase this stuff. So go ahead and and take that notes or whatever. Okay, haplo assignment. We explained that fairly well. And we used a Goins male 
and the counterpart going female. So that should be very helpful in your search to understand. Okay, first of all, Marilyn. I'm going to work Marilyn's first and then I'm going to work her match. Is then that way we establish her her teal. Okay. So, yes. Okay, so we're going to start with now, always start with yourself or whoever is the match because if you don't, you're going to get the generations messed up. Okay, so if your mother tests, your mother needs to go in the one position. Okay, so the first person is Miss Marilyn. And she was back at. Okay. Her mother. In this situation, this is this is just a female line, so I'm numbering them accordingly. However, if you were working on a regular pedigree, you would be number one, your father would be number two, and your mother would be number three, and down the row, so forth. Okay, so number two is Roberta, and I'm just going to write R. Owens. This is Marilyn's mother. Okay, and Roberta's mother was Arnetti Bloodwork. Okay, so Roberta's mother was Arnetti Bloodworth, and then Arnetti Bloodworth's mother was Frances Elizabeth Dahl or Dual. So Frances Elizabeth Dahl. And let me just talk about the dual dial surname for a minute because we have a lot of that come up. Um, prior to Louisiana, it was dual. Okay, so when you jump it out of Louisiana and Texas, uh, looking for the dolls, you're probably not going to have a lot of luck because most of the time it was dull. Um, really, the only time I see doll is, you know, about 18, 10, whenever Tapley shows up in Louisiana. And so I don't know if it was just a pronunciation or why they kind of started going by doll because um, the original surname and then also, their Y DNA matches or duals, so it's interchangeable. Those two names, and then Frances Elizabeth Dahl's mother was Serena Unknown, possibly Wilson. Okay, so poor Marilyn, you know, for 10 years she's been beating her head against this brick wall because I've lost my, I've lost my eraser, here it is, um, because she was looking for a Serena Wilson and we still don't know whether that was true or not. 
Um, but it is possible that she married a Wilson. Um, but it's 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 more likely that she was. I'm fixing to show you. Okay, so this is as far as Marilyn can go on her MTG event. All right, so then we went and we got Miss Clark's pedigree. And so we just started working it. And this is the way Miss Clark's pedigree goes down. Now, this is a Clark match. Okay, so number one would be. Private Clark. And Private Clark's mother was L. Perkins. And her mother was H. A box. Okay, so see, we're already getting over here into um, some familiar names for um, her. For H. A. Buxton's mother was Catherine. Doll or doll. Okay. And then Catherine Doll, doll's mother, was Agnes Buxton. So, as you can see, we're intermarrying. It happened with us. Okay, we're in Dogmas, so we're an in Dogmas tribe, so don't be shocked. And then her mother was Mary Louisa Drake. And then Mary Louisa Drake's mother was Charity Greaves. Or Creeves may have been Chavez. Um, I, I could probably look into the into DNA hits and see if or may, you know if some of the upper ones went by uh, Chavez. But the spelling that we have is from a Spanish Roman Catholic. Um, extracted baptismal record and so um, you know who knows um, but we're not allowed to see those actual records they just transcribe them for you and then they give you a transcribed copy and so they are interpreting these but we've always wondered if she was actually a child so um, now the Drakes and the Chavez and the Collins and the Goins were all in <coughs> what was known as the Louisiana Purchase. 
by the 1770s. Okay, see, um, this is why we're having so much problems hooking into some of the ones that remained in the Carolinas, especially in South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, even up into uh, all of the eastern colonies, is because our group started arriving in what was known as Louisiana Purchase, which is everything from the border of Canada all the way down to New Orleans by the 1770s. Okay, so our people left early. This line right here, the Drakes, I don't know, they might have even been there prior to that, the Drakes and the Chavez, but we don't know. Um, anyway, so this is where we got to. So Miss Marilyn and Miss Clark are on the same level. And then Roberta Goins and L. Perkins are on the same level. So this would be her contemporary. This would be her contemporary. This would be her contemporary. And this would be her contemporary. And Serena would be Agnes Buxton's contemporary. So we get to Catherine Dahl, Dahl, and she married James Toby Buxton. So Catherine Dole married James Toby Buxton. Okay. But James Toby Buxton was also married to Marilyn's grandmother, or so she thought. But she thought that this was a different line, however they exact mtDNA. Therefore, Agnes Buxton was Serena's mother, sister, grandmother, aunt, somewhere in there, to be from the same Mary Louisa Drake. Okay, so Agnes so Charity passed her into DNA to Mary Louisa. Mary Louisa passed it to Agnes. Agnes passed it to Catherine Doyle. And this is the generation where, where Marilyn was like, no, that's not right because this is not my grandmother. This is my step-grandmother. You know, and I kind of had to break the news that, uh, no. This woman had to be the mother of Serena and the mother of her grandmother as well. So therein lies your source of NTDNA. So Serena, we know there was a Serena Buxton over in Texas. So with Valentine and Alexander in them. And so she's having to really rethink her brick wall, but what it did is it kicked open this brick wall to know that Agnes Buxton or Mary Louisa Drake was most likely her next generation up to have passed this mtDNA unchanged mother to child for tens of thousands of years. But only daughters pass it on. Males do not pass their mtDNA on. So that is an mtDNA match. Um, that is a full sequence match. So this is this is the, how you would go about it. Is that you would sit down and you would lay your mother line out. Just like this. And then you would take your match. And you would lay their line out 
just like this. Somewhere in here, somewhere in there, you have your mother's cross paths. Because even if Agnes and Serena were sisters, or aunt, uh, aunt and niece, their mother, their common mother, is going to be the next generation. Okay? So regardless how you get there, this is your next generation, and this is her mother. Okay? So, that's that. And um, I hope that's helpful on the MTDNA. Now, I, I do want to also add that if you find your mtDNA furthest you know documented match you know say you have a match in with someone and they list some of them do some of them don't this is why it's extremely important I don't know why you would DNA test if you don't have a pedigree. Okay? I really don't know why you would test. Because you're just stabbing in the dark of, uh, you know, I got this surname, I matched that surname. It doesn't matter. It That has nothing to do with it. Until you get your pedigree work done, you're not going anywhere with your DNA. Period. End of the story. Not with Cousin Connect. Not with... Um, Empty DNA or Y DNA. I cannot stress to you enough to please learn pedigree. It is genealogy 101. And if you need help with it or you don't understand it, you don't have a tree on Ancestry, you can't figure it out, please just call or inbox me, tag me, and say, I need further instruction. I do not mind to do that. But don't, I'm not answering anymore. I'm not answering people who come to me and you know who you are. And you say, who was this and this and this? I know who those people are in my chart. But you have to tell me how they fit in there so I can understand where are you coming from here. Okay, you've got to do your basic genealogy and that's just the bottom line. And so, um, and in fact, um, I will probably try to do, when I come back, I'm leaving for Houston tomorrow. Um, excuse me. I have a, um, my nephew's getting married, which they've been planning this for a long time. They're having a huge wedding in East Texas and um, so my dad and I are flying out, and we will be there Thursday, and we're coming home next Tuesday. So hopefully I will get the next one done. If I still find that I'm getting a lot of problems or questions. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, questions about pedigree. You know, excuse me. Excuse me. I may have to cut this a little short today. Um, let me see what time is it. Okay, we still got 13 minutes. So, um, because I'm trying to keep these one hour, so I will change the title to fit what we actually did today because we did not get the Y DNA in here. Um, please post questions. If you have a question, please post it on the journey and then I can answer that because when I answer your question, I may be answering a lot of people's questions. And so let's try to keep it where you know, um, but please ask questions. If you don't understand how to do a pedigree, I do them all day long. I mean, I'm, I'm so, you know, Galen does them every day. So if you need help, we're available. Now let's talk about the journey. 
for a few minutes. I'm going to close this down. I'm not going to get to the to the Y DNA. But the bottom line here is that Charity Chavez, our creed, whatever her name was, and she married John Aaron Drake. And we're talking about the early 1700s or mid 1700s, mid 16th century. That woman right there, her mother, they are absolutely Turk, Albanian, Gypsy. Or their MTDNA is most common among those people. So you're looking at a Native American. Gypsy, which is very common in the MOA in the Mississippi area. So this is this is quite now, and I mean, you know, Dr. Nickens talks about them. You know, that's what and it caught my uh, ear with Dr. Nickens some twenty something years ago. Was he was talking about the gypsies out on the East Coast, and he said somebody needs to work on this. <coughs> you know these. Um, East Asians and Southwest Asians are coming in, you know, through the um, documented history of the colonies. And where did they go? Where are they? Well, we are definitely, he was definitely putting me on the right path. And I, I appreciate everything from Dr. Nickens because he is absolutely the representative for the, um, or in my eyes, he is absolutely the Virginia Indians expert, and um, he has went through the old records, uh, you know, early Burgess, right, House of Burgess, and these kinds of things, and uh, same right, he's followed behind Heinig, um, you know, through his disastrous tear through those records, and he's tried to mend things, but he always told us, somebody needs to work on the gypsies, because not only are they infamous in our families among Mississippi Moa and the Choctaw and the Chair Raw, uh, they are they came out of the Carolinas with us, and so we're going to talk about the Cheryls and the Perkins and the Udies and um, these kinds of people who who forged and built the Shenandoah Valley and Conestoga wagons because you look at a Conestoga wagon that is absolutely a gypsy wagon, and they the the Calder. The Calder families have been building those wagons for a thousand years, probably. Um, so it was just the right thing for them to do. But um, that that is hers. And I am going to get off of here because my voice is tired. And I don't want to lose it again. And we're about out of time. Listen, thanks you guys for being so patient. We can't wait for the journey to get started next year. We'll have our book together, the workbook. It will be $75 a year. And you will not, um, we will do this for members. Um, but um, this is, um, the, the journey is all about a membership drive. And so you guys need to realize that you're going to have to put a little bit of money into this because we spend a lot of time and we spend a lot of hours and, um, it's for a non not for profit, um, but the not for non not for profit um, also needs uh, office supplies, and you know we want to buy test kits. We want to test more of our members, and so all of that money will go towards new testing, new research, and you know incidentals like office supplies and so forth and so on. Um, so you will also qualify. Um, if you come to us and you say, hey, I chase my female MTDNA to this line and I don't have the money or I would like to apply for you guys to pay for my testing and we will uh, most definitely have a percentage of that membership fee. In fact, I think it's going to be about 45% is going right back towards, um, towards DNA testing and we're just going to keep moving forward with this and we hope you'll join us in the journey, and um, I will see you next week. You guys have a safe week and weekend, and um, hope you can join us again soon. Thanks.